Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> This week on Tales of Tyria, we've got some feedback from the Gamer Entitlement discussion. We've got a couple of great links this week, and a whole big mailbag. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Yes, welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here. It's talesoftyria.com, it's how you can find us. You can also find us on the Sound Strategy Network of YouTube.com. Welcome again to another great show. We've got a good show for you this week. Let me introduce everyone around the panel here. I am Bruiser, and joining me as always, we've got Vega. Welcome, sir. What do you got there? So got some Guinness? Guinness. It's Guinness from St. Paddy's Day. I bought like a four pack and I still have like three more. <laughs> wow. So... <laughs> That's good. How big, you doing? Big, I'm a big drinker. I'm good. I'm doing very well. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no shame at all. No shame. <laughs> Kids, do not stream and drink, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was Freelancer. Welcome, sir. How's your, how's, how's your uh, week been? Very good. I'm not drinking, but uh, as good as I can be without drinks. How about that? Excellent. And Kai, welcome back. We didn't see you last week. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm glad to be back today. Excellent. All right. So what we have uh, going on here, chat room, let me know how the, uh, how the video is playing there. I want to make sure that uh, what I'm seeing is, not, uh, is working out okay. And uh, right now we are going to move on to some feedback from last week's episode. Uh, we, t we talked to you guys last week about gamer entitlement and how it relates to Guild Wars 2 and, and the way that you earn power versus uh, uh, time spent and things like that. So we're we got a, a couple of good, really interesting feedback examples. So here's one from our friend Dean Fry. And he said, we have two students in one class and are total opposites to each other. This is a hypothetical. While student one concentrates and tries to pay attention to what the teacher says, student two does not pay attention and just ends up messing around at his desk, being ignorant to what the teacher is telling the student. Both of these students spend the exact same amount of time in the classroom, and at the end of the year, student one gets all A's while student two fails all of these and then complains that he is entitled to what student one earned. This example demonstrates that even though these two students spent the exact same amount of time in the classroom, the one who paid attention got what he was entitled to, while student two did not work hard and did not bother, so therefore he didn't get the results he wanted. To round this up, in my opinion, people should be rewarded solely for how good they are at the game, regardless of whether they spent X amount of time in it. So, thoughts to the panel. Is this a good example of what we were talking about? Is it flawed? I don't think this applies in every scenario because what if student two who just kind of dicks around the whole time, what if he's just like a natural genius and he's the one that ends up getting the all A's and that student one who tries to pay attention gets all B's? I mean, would that argument still apply that student two still deserved it? What do you think, Bridger? Well, I was usually student two. I said, homework, that's for chumps. I'll just take a B minus. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's, it's a very sticky situation, and actually that's going to be our question of the week this week. So if you guys want to leave us a comment in, a, in whatever thread you're reading this in on YouTube or send us an email, feedback at talesofteria.com, we want to ask you, what makes a better, let's, for this example, let's say, what makes a better pro gamer? What makes somebody that you want to follow on the professional scene? Somebody who's simply innately talented and picks up the game and it's amazing what they can do. Or somebody who gets where, they, where they're at through supreme training. This is a very interesting discussion going on on Team Liquid, so we want to hear what you guys have to say about it here. Uh, we've got another great example, and this is uh, another way to look at the whole gamer entitlement methodology. 
Uh, this is from Bar Gamer, who says, uh, quote, in my amateur psychologist opinion, gamer entitlement is just another <laughs> word for narcissism. The great thing about third-person video games is for a narcissist is that instead of a mirror, you have a 30-inch monitor full of your personal character, his achievements, and his gear score. Even the implication that you or your character doesn't deserve the best of the best, or even exclusive treatment, will induce the hottest of flames and the slimiest of trolling. There's no help for such people. Only slash ignore. I'm glad none of you guys are narcissists. Your fan, Bar Gamer. End quote. So, I care about my achievements. <laughs> I, care. I care about them. Because I'm they guilty. are your I'm, achievements, I care. aren't they? I care about how cool my guy looks. I care about my um, title. But that's because... The correction, we are all narcissists. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the idea of the avatar, right? That's the idea of the gamer avatar. It's supposed to represent you. You're supposed to put your persona onto that avatar and imagine that that is you. So if you are not caring what that character is looks like or what that character has achieved, then that that that's simply not working. You're not immersed enough into the into the into the games to attach yourself to your character, right? Isn't that the goal? Yeah, see yeah. if you're playing a if you're playing a game, a virtual environment, you know, I mean, are you trying is that is that guy is he trying to say that all games, MMOs, etc. When you get into them, it should track nothing. Like, you should never know the progress you've made. You should never know besides what you know yourself. And I, I just think that's broken because what's going to happen is it's human nature to compare yourself to other players. So mm -hmm. when you do come across Joe Blow, it's it's all hearsay at that point if you don't have the achievements. And I'm not a big fan of Gear Score, but I mean it's there for one of many bad reasons there's are there are a couple good reasons for it to exist and that is that it shows that i am i have done all of this now how you take it past that point whether you're like the elitist well that makes me better than you you know because i have 20 more achievement points than you um that's a problem but i think the whole enjoying your achievements being um into your character to the point where you you love what you've done and you could show off to your friends your mom for all i care and uh I don't know. I think that's part of gaming. That should be in gaming. I mean, that's been in forever. I don't think that's a bad thing. It, the bad part is when you start bringing it to the point where you come across your other guild members, or you come across this average guy, and you immediately place yourself above them because you have 200 more gear score than he does. That's that's where the issue lies. Like in WoW, we all were there, right? So you come across this guy. This You're a priest. You come across another priest. He has 150 less gear score than you. Well, all of a sudden, when the raid is forming and these guys are looking for priests, they look at your gear score, 150 higher, and they assume that you're just naturally a better priest. That's where the problem lies. Because that priest that has 150 less gear score or whatever it might be, achievements, etc., he may be the world you know, to that, that raid, and they just don't know it. He, he could be the savior. But they base it on that face value, and that's where things get messed up. And that's my response to that. So. And to defend uh, Bar Gamer, I don't think what he was saying is that those things are naturally bad. I think what he says is those things naturally attract and appeal to the egocentric, you know, narcissist person. And, I mean, those kind of people exist in every community, including online communities. And these tools allow them to, you know, be that much more egocentric. And that they are the, the kinds of people that you don't like playing games against, right? Or even with in some cases. And those are the kinds of people. And the example that I thought of when I read this is when uh, Burning Crusade came out, right? They, they, World of Warcraft, everybody's level 60. They raised the level cap to level 70. Uh, I don't remember how long it was after Burning Crusade came out. But then they made it easier to get to level 60. They made like all the quests give like 25% more XP from 1 to 60 in order to help people get their alts up there. And and, and get up to level 70 and there were people that were level 70 that raged about this they said it was so hard for my character i can't believe it this is retar you can't make it easy casuals are making it easy for casuals and the game is getting dumbed down and i think what it really was was that these people identified so much of their ego was wrapped up in this achievement of leveling their character up that if you make that achievement easier to get, effectively that lowers your own ego. That's admitting that this piece of that you've done isn't you know that that big awesome achievement that you thought because now it's trivial. 
or more trivial. So they tie their ego to the leveling up process. And then when that gets easier, it's seen as making themselves smaller. Reminds me of this guy. Reminds me of uh, guys in real life that have the the little Honda Civic, you know, and they got it all tricked out with the body <laughs> kit and the trims and, and the rims and stuff, but they don't do anything under the hood, you know? So they got it fully tricked out and then they put a little muffler on it and the muffler is like, you know, it sounds great uh, because it is just that, a muffler, but they'll show it off to you and they'll brag about it. Oh, yeah, I can kick your ass and all this other <laughs> as stuff. Long and, as, it, as long as it looks and, fast and sounds fast, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is, it, it's an entitlement. You know, I'm better than you because... I put eight hundred dollars into my vehicle, you know. Uh, That's what you were saying about the whole gear score thing. People had better gear, so they looked better, but really, they, it doesn't mean they have any more skills just because they got better drops on loot. Well, that was like someone. Someone was saying how, um, you know, does it does it irritate you where you run a certain dungeon for weeks looking for that one thing you need to get your next bump in gear score so that you could go do your next dungeon, and you're spending weeks running this thing, and then you have one guy that's like. Oh, derp de derp, I'm going to run this for the first time. And then he gets it. And then it, you feel like, oh, I ran this for weeks. Why? I should have that before you have it. You came in here for the first time. And that's yeah. not the case. It's all, it's, it's all luck. It's all chance. And just because you happen to get gear faster because you're luckier for whatever reason doesn't make you a better player. It should be noted that if comparing gear score in Guild Wars 2, if I am a Mesmer, I automatically get 800 more points. I just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> you do? Yeah, Why? because all, all of my illusions copy my gear as well. And uh, <laughs> in Thief, you get minus 200. Oh, because they copy oh. oh, the gear. Oh, it all makes sense now. Okay. So, <laughs> anywho, uh, there's a thing that... that uh, that Vega put in here as well, an example of gamer entitlement. Idra, who plays StarCraft II, was getting beaten by a bunch of people who had come to the scene later than he did, where he was there from the beginning, and I think, and he said, quote, I spent three years playing this game, like 12 hours a day. I'm not supposed to lose to these people. I've certainly been in that situation where I see someone on the other team of whatever game I'm playing, playing really badly. And like, I identify everything they're doing wrong, but then I start losing to them. And I just rage in my head going, I'm not supposed to lose to these people. I'm better than this. I'm just like having an off day and it just, oh, it's so frustrating. So let me get this straight. Idra is playing. At, is this at um, at PAX? Or? I'm not sure. I, I'm no, not sure. Was, it was a it was a state of the game. I forget which tournament they were talking about. It might have been is is IPL one. Okay. So um, he's he's losing, and he just says, "I I am not supposed to lose to these people." Did let's he really say to the that? Context here. Let's no, that's to what he context. said. Go watch the YouTube clip. Wow, that, that is so Idra. Cool. Nothing's changed in like three years. <laughs> let's listen to the context. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. The clip, the clip was from 2011, <laughs> so it's not that that far. But... <laughs> nice try, Sean. So this is how you're gonna get 20,000 viewers, Idra. <laughs> forgot that other race was doing well. Ah. <laughs> yeah, as soon as Zerg wins like a game, then we can talk. But I'm sorry, JP. Finish your interview with the winner of the IPL. <laughs> he was explaining how Zerg don't win right doesn't now. Count. I'd it like doesn't you to. count. I spent three years playing this game. Like 12 hours a day. I'm not supposed to lose these people. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Control's reaction there. Oh, man. If you're, if you're listening right now to the MP3, tune into the VOD and see what everyone's I don't think you can see, but my it. face is switching. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are the disapproving Reddit eyes right there. <laughs> and nobody saw that because I didn't change to the to the stream. But <laughs> that's that's very interesting. You're right. That's that seems to be the sense of entitlement that we're talking about. Um, so let's see here. Bar gamers but watching. He's in the chat. Yeah, Hello, he just sir. said, "Can you tell them I'm watching so I can defend my email?" <laughs> <laughs> I I understand what you're saying. I don't think that, uh, that he's got that, nothing to defend. We're not bashing it. We're not bashing it. We um, agree with it. Now, Dark Academic is in there, too. And before we get to the news, I wanted to mention that. I remember last week we used Dark Academic's uh, feedback, and we said that he was going to win something from the pile of PAX stuff that we got here. Well, he turned it down. tell everybody about that, Bridger. I'm going to do that in a second. He turned it down, right. and he said, you know, we're not going to do that. 
I just want a shout out. So uh, a quick shout out to a dark ac dark academic actually dark academic and his Euro guild, which is darkreavers.co.uk. There's a link to that in the show notes if you want to check it out. Looks like a cool guild. And uh, there you go. Shout out. I think he's uh, looking for people, I assume, and he wants people to know who he is. So there you go. Now, uh, for the two people that we had, Dean Fry and Bar Gamer this week, I'm going to send an email back to those guys. They are going to get their choice of the PAX stuff this week. However, for the Guild Wars 2 beta keys, which I am not going to reveal to the camera this week, I'll just show you the front, um, there are still a bunch of those left. What we're going to do is just do a simple lottery because I know that not everybody that subscribed to you know the YouTube channel or what have you for example will necessarily have a use for these but there are probably a bunch of people that have friends that have not pre-purchased that they're trying to get them to bet get the game so what I'm gonna do is I've set up an email address which is a contest hang on I'm going to set it up right now there we go save changes and make sure it doesn't fail this time um, it did fail. Oh, well. Uh, oh, it's already in there. Okay, so it is set up. So, contest at talesofteria.com is how you can enter. Just, just send us an email saying, hey, I wanted to uh, get one of those beta keys, and we're going to do simple lottery. I'll just do a random number generator on all of the emails that come in. Please don't email twice. I can easily see when you email twice. It's not going to be <laughs> difficult at all. So uh, just send an email to contest at talesofteria.com and say, hey, I look for one of those free beta keys. We've got about, uh, I think, four or so to give out here. So that will be that. Now, if uh, you want to get a stab at one of these uh, awesome prizes that we had from PAX, just send us some good feedback, feedback at talesofteria.com, uh, and, and let us know what you thought of this week's episode, how we can improve it. If you've got any uh, really insightful comments that make it into next week's show, or if you've got any questions that go into the mailbag, we're going to give you guys uh, your choice of anything from there. So let's move on to the news. This week, this is a very interesting thing. Reddit pointed out that when the pre-purchase started la la this past week, people in New Zealand were getting charged the American price, $60, $80, and one, well, I don't know about the, for the collector's edition, but for the two digital versions, $60 and $80, which is damn near unprecedented in Australia and New Zealand. They have had ridiculous standards for digital game pricing for the longest time now. And I just want to say, you know, round of applause to ArenaNet for finally breaking that mini cartel. There's nobody else here to applause. I don't have a sound effect. Maybe I'll add it in post. <laughs> I'll add it in post. So, I mean, do but you then... guys... Sorry. European got still European still got charged normal price, right? They Kai? did. Yeah, it's like I just checked the uh, conversion. One hundred and three dollars I paid for digital and... deluxe edition. Wow. <laughs> so what's that? That's what twenty dollars more than what it should yeah, be. Yeah, twenty dollars more than it should be. Um, and it's a digital good. It's just like why can't we? I don't know. It's it's weird. Yeah, they're not paying for postage or anything like that. Like I don't understand. Like. Live, but... NCSoft basically said, yeah, we were pricing, you know, according to the region and based on the taxes and whatever, the duty, whatever. I, I don't know. I, I never understood how these game prices are so different on digital the, editions unless they the just The only need thing to I can think of is that some people have said, I mean, I don't know how it works, is that our prices include VAT and yours don't. So, I mean, I don't know how much the digital deluxe edition is once you add VAT. Why don't you that? tell us, sure. because there are probably a lot of people that don't know what the VAT tax is. Well, that tax is redundant, isn't it? Doesn't the T stand for tax? Value added tax, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Is that simply the same as sales tax in the U.S., basically? Or is that yeah, only for I imported think so, goods? Yeah, so, but v VAT is added onto it before you buy it, whereas obviously in America, you get it added when you pay for it. But we know what it is going to be before. So when we see a price, that is the price. Whereas when you see a price, you then need to add 20% onto that. We don't. So I think that's why there's a big difference because ours includes the tax, whereas yours doesn't. So you, you might then have to add $20 onto that because that's your tax. So I think it is a, sa it's a sales tax, essentially. Uh, yeah. It differs from sales tax as in the tax is collected and remitted to the government only once at the point of purchase by the consumer. So that's interesting. Okay, well, Wikipedia, thank you very much. Uh, but that, but that, is, that is true. But still, our sales tax seems to be a lot lower than, isn't the VAT tax like 20% in, in uh, the European Union? I think? Something like that? Yeah, 20%, yeah. So 20% and 6% may make up easily the $20 difference there. And I mean, the 6% isn't even actually applied uh, because it's... Uh, 
it's it's after the fact. So that was interesting. That was interesting to see. Anyway, let's uh, move on. There is another piece of news. The stress test happened this past Friday. And not everybody knew about it, but there were a bunch of people that were on the, the list, the beta list. Either they were pre-purchased or maybe on that other list. We don't know which one they chose from or maybe both that were invited to the stress test this past Friday from about six hours at 12 to 6. And I guess what they were doing is preparing and testing and making sure the servers are going to be able to handle the hundreds of thousands of pre-purchase customers maybe next weekend. Watch your fingers. Oh, my God. So theoretically, if... The pre-purchase, sorry, if the stress test went well, we'll see the beta this coming weekend, the 20th, uh, Friday the 20th. So and, and you know what went wrong oh. with that, right, Bridger? The stress test? I heard that the pre-purchasers who had linked their beta account could get in, but the stress test invites could not? Yeah, Is that pretty what it much. Was? So what happened to everybody that never heard about what just happened over the weekend? On, uh, I believe it was Friday, right? Um, last yes, time it happened? Friday. On Friday, there were, uh, if you had downloaded your client via a unnamed means <laughs> uh, and you had your client ready to log in you could log in with your beta credentials and even though you weren't invited to it it let you in and so all of a sudden all these people found out about it there was a reddit thread that got taken down and people were mass uh, joining all the, you know once they realized that I can log <laughs> in right now anybody that had beta or had pre-purchase could log in so that was a big deal. So they sure ha got their heck of a stre <laughs> yes, stress test, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but then what happens is, like, everybody, uh, after they closed down, you know, closed the doors, and uh, I guess ArenaNet realized what was going on, they closed it. And so everybody sort of, like, for the next day felt like, man, I wish I knew that happened, you know. And uh, it was quite interesting. But, yeah, it was a, a true uh, stress test in uh, – I heard from a lot of different sources, Reddit, et cetera, that everybody had a blast in World v. World and stuff. So I hope they do some more of those. I <laughs> hope they I got their uh, the data that they were looking for. <laughs> I can't imagine that they didn't. Like, there must have been at some point when, when servers started to break down where there were way more people than they expected. Uh, so, <laughs> Well, <laughs> from that. what I heard, though, I mean, the, the servers never crashed. Uh, I mean, awesome. they, they were all green. So, I mean, this is all hearsay, but I would imagine the arena that's in good shape. Uh, especially with all those people so. for the beta event this weekend right yeah we can hope man oh i hope so they'll say bad. that vega you're gonna have like a, a horde of people Listen, chasing you with pitchforks i had i had last friday off from pax i heard there was gonna be something this weekend which turned out to be the stress test so i had this friday off and i didn't get in the freaking stress test and now i saw somebody posted a leak thing that said it's gonna be next weekend and the stress test going well means it may go next weekend so i have next friday off i'm not sure if i can get another friday off <laughs> the weekend after so it better i got i got this friday, friday off so i'm hoping it's this weekend oh i hope so too uh so let's let's jump right into that for now if the beta is this weekend. What to expect for the show next Sunday? We will plan on doing something next Sunday, which nobody will tune into because they're all busy playing the beta. But we're going we're gonna to try and make it awesome, and we're going to have it available to you after the fact as well, of course, on video on demand. We're hoping to get together some uh, you know, PvP casts going on. Uh, we have uh, some, some workarounds for the fact that there's no spectator mode planned. So we'll see how that works out. 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, as is per normal. Uh, Talesofteria.com slash live is where you can find that and uh for we're if there is a beta next weekend and we wind up doing that we'll have the actual show on monday uh at eight o'clock as well where we actually talk about all our experiences and we will of course be recording tons of video assuming the nda comes down which they said it was uh so we're going to be recording tons of video and doing commentary and things like that total biscuit style uh, at least I will. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I will. <laughs> so yeah, well, uh, I think there's a bunch of ways uh, we can show it off to people. First off, uh, tell them about the t the team page, Bridger. Absolutely. Uh, That's what I was getting to next. So okay. the, where, where, if you if we if you do for some reason find yourself unable to play the beta for whatever this for whatever reason this weekend, maybe you can't pre-purchase, you don't have the money, whatever. We will probably all be streaming, and you can find the links to those uh, pages on the uh, show notes for this week. It is the it has a Tales of Tyria team page, which has all of us on there, and there's also a Team Legacy team page, which has all of us minus Kai plus all of Team Legacy. We gotta so, add Kai on there, she's our honorary member. Honorary Team <laughs> Legacy member for streaming purposes. So it's those are I'm two different places. I'm good enough to be in Team Legacy, but I rejected you guys. Ah. 
Yeah, it's just that ping, Kai. Otherwise, we already would have taken you away from deuces. <laughs> we have our means. All right, so the, the simple answer to that is twitch.tv slash team slash TOT or twitch.tv slash team slash team legacy and those links again are in the show notes for this week which you can find in the description of this youtube video and or team legacy uh, team legacy team tales of Tyria.com. holy moly <laughs> too many urls so, right. so this is how it works uh, all, all of you guys watching if you want to watch somebody that is learning the game and he's just not sure quite how to do it and he's breaking down numbers you watch bridger <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm just kidding. Just Bridger. because I haven't played yet, doesn't if you mean want to watch going. somebody and have a lot of laughs doing so, you watch Kai. <laughs> no. oh, I'm and, sorry. And Go if ahead. you want to watch somebody <laughs> learning how to pay, play Thief instead of Mesmer, you watch Freelancer. <laughs> All right. Uh, good times. Anyway, uh, let's see. Anything else that I meant to mention at the beginning that I didn't mention at the beginning, but now I'm going to mention it here. Nope, I think that's everything here. So don't forget uh, to subscribe to the, t uh, the uh, YouTube channel. That uh, We had about 500 people go, oh, okay, and click subscribe for us. So definitely thank you guys. And if you don't want to subscribe, tell me why. Feedback at TalesOfTeria.com. Tell us what you'd like to see in the show that would make you happier. All right, let's go to the mailbag. We had a bunch of different people emailing us uh, over the past couple of weeks, and we didn't get to a lot of the questions. And the stupid birds are going nuts. Background birds. They stop as soon as I turn around. You see that? Yeah. It's because <laughs> Overseer Cat had to put them in line. I guess so. All right, so <laughs> for the mailbag. Quote, something I was wondering the other day. I was wondering if ArenaNet will have RP servers, that is, role-playing servers for Guild Wars 2. Our peers like to gather on the same server and community and will adopt a server as an RP server in the absence of any designated servers. Personally, I feel Guild Wars 2 should have one or two designated RP servers to make it easier for role players to find each other. What's your take on this subject? Kevin, a.k.a. I'm not going to give out that name because you'll be horribly, horribly mutilated. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Orson Di Turno. Uh, so this is a very interesting topic. For those of you that are unaware, role-playing servers have been designated in other games specifically to allow people who want to actually role-play and get into the immersive environment of the game to all sort of go to the same server so that they can RP together. And that's a verb, by the way, RP. Uh, and they tend to be very... Uh, wholesome communities that are just like very non trolly that's what they're looking to, to really avoid now some of the rules that you get on rp servers are things like naming rules where you can't be named like iphone 236 your name has to be somehow lore connected or, or somehow or super saiyan 455 yeah you, there shouldn't be any <laughs> pop cultural references or things like that so th that adds to the workload of the developer in this case is is anything that you have to do extra to make this server uh work or you can you know basically police the chat and say no you know out of uh character things in the main chat only in whispers or something like that so those kinds of servers if just naming one and saying this is the rp server everybody wants to rp go there is easy they can do that no problem but doing that there's going to be a number of people who are going to expect that that server has uh, enforcement of RP style rules. My immersion! Uh, it's a good question, and I think that uh, so far we have had mostly evasive answers, which to me is a no. I don't think we've had a straight no to that answer, as far as I know, but uh, it, it's a good question. And I, I think that we're probably not going to see it right away unless there's a really big draw, just because it is that extra work for ArenaNet. I don't know. What do you guys think? I I feel like it's a lot of work for ArenaNet to dedicate, like, regulating something like that. Um, I feel like if, I, I guess a good thing to start out would just be just to have one with a naming convention, sort of. But, you know, having someone that's going to be regulating the chat and trying to keep people in line when they're breaking the immersion, I think that's kind of, uh, I think it's asking a lot right from the launch when they're focusing on so many other things that are more important, I feel. Yep. It's certainly, <laughs> certainly. I, I don't to... mean I don't mean to to rag on the RPers out there, but um, I mean ArenaNet's trying to make an esport type game, so that's what they're going to be focused on. They're not going to be focusing on role playing, per se. 
I understand the desire, though, to find other people who are willing to sort of help you get immersed in the world rather than just be like, have the have the Baron's chat be, so did anybody see Survivor last night? Like, if you're trying to, <laughs> you know, get into your character and pretend, you know, this is that's the whole idea of role-playing games to begin with. You know, people have sort of just adopted them as a, from a more casual perspective, freelancer. You people don't even get into the world at all. You're just casuals pretending that, oh, well, I'm just playing a game. It's not a real world at all, is it? So you, you know, Bridger, <laughs> there's a line between our peers that name themselves whatever, you know, with a fancy or role playing type name, and then those that RP to have like sex via chat and whispers in story. I wasn't wings. gonna touch that okay. particular topic. Uh, I <laughs> I have I have seriously gone as a uh, I was a undead rogue and I went into Stormwind one time and I swear that these two were hiding in this one little house having like I don't even want to describe it here and like I, I just left them alone because they creeped me out you know you should have just come so, in and like dumped a bunch of cats on them or something ridiculous because <laughs> there are you know there are people that that do that and it's that's that to me that's when you get a little bit you know too into it well yes um, yes but yeah I do agree the, the of chats, our peers. Unless it's unless it's about Game of Thrones, all all the other stuff doesn't have any relevance in um, in Guild Wars chat. So I, I can, I I like RP servers for that reason because some people just like to relax and they want to get away from work. They had a rough day and that allows them to do so more. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just there's a limit that it should be. You know, there should be set there <laughs> that uh, a lot it of people cross that limit. Yeah. RP servers. All right, so, yeah, that's that's a very good question. We The answer, of course, like I said, we don't know. Uh, we, one can hope, and maybe they'll just put a label on one and say, hey, our peers gather here. Uh, who knows? So, actually, somebody in the in the chat brought up the uh, the point, like, what if I'm just a new person who, who doesn't know where the our peers <laughs> are gathering? And it's like the our peers all decide, all right, let's go on, uh, you know, server beta or whatever, you know, the server name is. Let's, okay, the whole RP community says as a group, here's where we're going. And the new person just goes, oh, that looks like a good server. Click. And then now they're immersed in this world where everybody is talking about the, you know, the game world as if it really exists. And they're going, what is this place? <laughs> Where's the real world? Why doesn't anybody answer me when I ask them if they've seen Survivor? <laughs> oh, wait, no, the kids aren't watching Survivor these days. What are they watching? They're watching uh, The Dancing with the Stars, right? Is that it? That's what the kids are watching? I don't know. I don't like this topic. Let's move on. Free for answer. all you guys though, that are that are looking for RP servers, there, as far as I know, there isn't going to be RP servers. But I do know, uh, and this is just to kind of help out, um, that Guild Wars 2 Guru has a very large group that's organizing, and they all plan to roll on the same server. Mm -hmm. So you got, I'll give a link to Bridger to put on the show notes. But if you, if there's RPers out there, and there's there's lots of them, you know, they're just not exactly very vocal. Um, Unless, unless they get into game, that is. So uh, <laughs> definitely look, look into that group because uh, they're going to actually set up like an RP type community. I think that's awesome. Um, and that server will be just filled with RPers, or that's what they're aiming to do. And I think that, that goal is really ambitious and really cool at the same time. Absolutely. And, and I actually favored rolling like RP PvP servers in, uh, in, in WoW because I found the community in general, even if I didn't want to like interact myself, I liked being surrounded by other people that weren't talking about the real world. That didn't, it helped me not get, like when I was just PvEing, going through the world, it's like I want to get immersed in the world. Like the same reason I play Skyrim is like I love pretending like this world and then coming up with motivations for what my character is going to do next and getting like that escapist mentality, right? So I, I liked being in that situation. So maybe I'll make a character on one of those. Uh, or, so there or you go, Malkir there. to the rescue there. It's. Uh www.ashenfold.com and that's that's the name of the actual guild or group Ashenfold Cartel. They are uh, at least as far as Team Legacy that we've been looking at all these different communities. They are by far the biggest RP community I've seen. So, if you're into the whole hardcore RP scene, uh, minus the whole ERP stuff, uh, <laughs> <laughs> go to that site and uh, tell them uh, Tales of Tyria sent you. There you go. All right. Yeah. So freelancers got the next question from someone named AJK. AJK, so let's see here. All right, so he says, first of all, thanks for a great podcast. By far the most enjoyable way to get Guild Wars info and news. My question is, what is the difference between so-called gold sinks and simply having a lower drop rate of gold as well as making sellable stuff 
uh, sell for less. Would this have the same effect? Thanks in advance, AJK. So, uh, Bridger, me and you bounced this around a little bit a few episodes ago, but the idea of a gold sink is to, uh, it, it's a natural way to balance the, the Guild Wars economy. The idea is that there are always going to be players and guilds that, for whatever reason, they, they farm better or they collaborate better and you know develop interests and they get more gold so what do they do with that gold if, if there's no such thing as a gold sink um, then what happens is they accumulate all this mass wealth and then when something does come up with other players uh, they can just instantly buy it out I'll give you an example let's say a mini pet pops up on the auction house everybody wants that mini pet that white kitten okay <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so Without a gold sink that slowly uh, adds attrition to this guild's bank or the players, what happens is these guilds or these players that, that mass all this wealth can just instantly buy out everything on the auction house. Well, how much fun is that for you guys if you have never have a chance of getting these things? So uh, AJK says, uh, why not, uh, would this all have the same effect, lowering the drop rate of gold? No, it wouldn't because lowering the drop rate of gold, obviously, there's always going to be that guy. You know who they are. You probably have friends. They play the auction house system. I'm one of those guys. Um, and we always have a ton of money. But without repair costs, without upkeep costs for guilds and keeps, and without catapults uh, and trebuchets and all the things in World v. World that large guilds are going to have to buy consistently and buy more of because they are a larger guild, then what happens is whether you lower the drop rate of gold or not, um, it's these guilds without any sort of gold sinks such as those are just going to ruin everything. And I do mean ruin. I mean, Team Legacy, Deuces, we joke about you know these guilds all the time, but there's going to be a lot of guilds, hundreds of guilds, that have a ton of wealth. And the idea of uh, what ArenaNet's doing to sort of uh, balance the system is if I'm a big guild, I have to support that big guild by providing a lot of catapults, a lot of trebuchets, etc., repair costs for everybody in that guild. Uh, and that's just guilds in itself. When you're running around PvE, you have repair costs as well. You have travel costs. Everybody knows, uh, if you watch any videos, when you click between points on a map, you have to pay copper or silver, depending on how far away it is. So without all of that stuff, um, you, you have a broken uh, economic system. And making your last point there, making sellable stuff less, that's not going to make a difference for the guy that's creating monopolies in the auction house. And I can tell you that firsthand experience. It doesn't matter what the vendor prices are. The entire market's going to be controlled by the auction house. It's not going to be controlled by what uh, I sell to vendors for. And that's just my take on it. What do you think, Bridger? Yeah, I mean, it, it really comes down to two things. How much gold is being created on a daily basis and how much is being destroyed. If more gold is coming into the economy on a daily basis than is being destroyed, then you have basically inflation. The value of each individual gold piece is going to go down because there are more of them, right? So if, you, if everybody in the game has 100 gold, and then if I wanted to sell Jimmy the Kitten or whatever, then maybe he sells for 50 gold. But if everybody in the game has 1,000 gold, Nobody's going to buy Jimmy the Kitten for 50 gold because everybody's going to outbid and Jimmy the Kitten's going to be 500 gold instead. So basically the more wealth that the you know, the more average wealth that everybody has, the less each individual piece of that wealth is worth. That's why if America just printed money to, you know, solve its problems, then oh no, but I'm just, you know, that's how, that's how inflation happens. The, the government has to keep track of how much money is in circulation. And that's why banks actually take money out of circulation when they find damaged money or, or old coins or something like that. They'll take it out and replace it with new coins or new printed money. But usually you don't want to print more money to just keep having money flow into the system. The gold sink in a real economy is, you know, ones getting thrown down the drain and coins falling out of somebody's pockets and getting lost. And... It's those old coins that are coming out of the system when they go to a bank eventually. So you have to have some way to pull the money out of the system if you're creating money. The other problem with an MMO is the money, the, you have to make more money than is destroyed or else nobody would have it, right? So you can't have money, more money destroyed than is being made because then you'd have deflation and there'd be less money over time. But you can't have that because everybody has to have some money. So you have to have some form of inflation up to a point, and then once you have enough in the economy, it has to stop. 
So that's a really, really weird thing to have to try and program in. And maybe in the background, ArenaNet's going to be playing with, you know, gold generation rates, you know, drop rates and things like that. Once they get a decent amount of money in the system, maybe they'll play with drop rates and make it drop less. But then that means the people that got rich early had it easier. And any players new farming trying to get rich now have it much harder because there's lower drop rates. There's just landmines when it comes to the economics of an MMO because it's not real economics. It's not real scarcity. It's, it's, it makes my head hurt. <laughs> I think that's why I don't, I don't, I, that's why I hate the economies in MMOs. They just, they just hurt my head as well. I mean, <laughs> that's why I stay Eve, away from them. Eve works the best because things are actually destroyed every time a player is destroyed. The ship is destroyed. There's only a few salvage, salvageable parts after that you get out of that. So if you, uh, get a bunch of minerals and you turn those into parts and you turn that part into a, you know, $300,000 ship, then the ship gets destroyed and there's maybe fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth uh, or isk worth of parts left on that ship so literally money was destroyed but then money is created in every asteroid field so that system works really well it, we don't exactly have that in guild wars 2 so it's much much harder to tune those gold sinks to be correct well you do to an extent though because you like i was saying the catapults and trebuchets and repairing mm -hmm. walls and buying upgrades for your keeps but and... can you change those prices can ArenaNet change those prices without people getting crazy? I, I guess via patches, but you're right. You know, on the fly, they don't change it all. The market doesn't adjust those prices. So, Abel points out that Eve's economy was designed by an actual economist. I think that I heard somewhere that ArenaNet hired an economist to help design their economy as well. Uh, I may be uh, wrong with that. We'll we'll have to see. But uh, I don't know. Any final thoughts uh, from Vega or Kai on the economy system? Um, in regards to you talked about like how hard it is after a while to get the money and people who, you know, freelancer said he's one of them, play the auction house straight from the beginning. There's a lot of people who just go into a game to play it and there's a lot of people who from day one are like, I'm going to make money. And I yeah, think there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be one of those people who want to wants to have money from the beginning and buy everything, you do literally have to do it from the beginning. I mean, if you start later on, it does get a lot harder. And I think, I mean, that's the difference. It depends what you really want from the beginning of the game but yeah all right uh let's go on to the last question then we're about 45 minutes in i think this is going to take us right to where we want to be so uh vega i think you wanted to start off with this question from mike b21 sure um so he's asking about how do you let people know when they are baddies um, how do you let someone know when they are baddies? I mean, some people generally get better over time, but how do you tell people that don't get better that they need to try harder? I find this difficult to do. Some people don't call out when they are being hit in PvP. Some people don't say anything. Some cannot assist or peel. It becomes a chore. And then they want to PvP with you all the time because you are good. And I want to just pull what hair I have left out of my skull. Same goes for PvE. How do you let go of that guy you have played with for years because he's not putting up the DPS or learning his class enough to be useful. Um, and so <laughs> I, I'm, not a, I'm not a guild leader by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I have had to deal with people in real life Oh, I should who point out, Malkier wants to point out, this is not Mike B, a.k.a. Phony, from uh, at least not to my knowledge. I think this is a different no, Mike not. B. This no. is the Mike B that's in the chat, Mike B21. Go ahead, yes. Rega. Um, so I'm not a guild leader by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I've had, I have had to deal with this in real life scenarios where people just aren't pulling their weight. And um, I guess the best way that I've found is just to be respectful when you go about it. Um, <laughs> no, one, no one likes to sink in all of this time and effort into learning a class and then thinking that they are good at that class just for you to come over and stomp on their hopes and dreams and tell them that they're terrible. Um, I disagree. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, We're if, get you're, so many if you're comments. respectful about it and just not, you know, you're, if you're being level headed and giving them, you know, real evidence, real ex examples, trying to have like constructive criticism, it'll go over a lot better than um, you're pretty terrible. You should just stop playing or, or <laughs> go, go play game. a different class or something. Like, try and give them hints, try and lead them in the right direction. And if it's getting to a point where they are just completely hopeless, then you need to tell them, I'm sorry, I've tried everything I can. 
it, you're hopeless. Maybe, <laughs> maybe at that point, maybe at that point, you could lay down the, hard the reality truths. on them. The but, hard truths. But to, to me, the best thing to do is to just be respectful because no one likes um, someone just completely crapping all over them when they put so much time and effort into something. Go ahead, freelancer. Kai, go ahead. Kai, do you, Kai, you want to go before freelancer? Yeah. Um, okay. I agree. I would very much be like, okay, is there anything I can help you with? Um, you know, I use this spec. You know, maybe you should try it. Like, quite like passive. So, like, oh, you know, maybe you should get this upgrade or maybe you should try, you know, these runes. And that's very much how I am. I just try and give them advice. Like, oh, I found this really cool build. Like, you know, do you want to try it? Like, stuff like that. Um, I'm very. No, it's bad. Go away. I, I, <laughs> I find it hard to be like, you suck. Like, I could never do that. But I would be very much like passive and then be like, maybe you should watch this person. Or, you know, until you get your gear up, I'm just going to put this person in the raid and like stuff like that. But um, yeah, I'm very much like a passive, aggressive person. <laughs> I guess I guess it comes. There, I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. That's why people join different guilds. I mean, I know I'm very much a a one shot guy. I will give everybody the first shot to prove themselves. But the second they are that baddie, I tell them get out of my group. You know, and practice, and I'll I'll provide them that that support structure to get them back into the group. But at that point, I don't have time to waste. You know, um, it's for me. I, I guess it's. That's just the environment I've always been in, you know, throughout uh, tournaments, etc. You're not, you don't go into those scenes saying, hey guys, can you teach me how to play at your level? Uh, it, it doesn't work like that. I mean, you, you have to do the work yourself. And now, if you have a player that is honestly coming up to you and uh, that wants to learn and stuff, there's a time and place for that. But a baddie is somebody, in my mind, that is at the wrong time in the wrong place and they're trying to play on your level or what you're or they're trying to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish but they're just completely failing at it and at that point i'm sorry but if if a kid's playing with the lighter you got to let him burn himself um let him die i'm not going to save him um it's uh, in a game in an mmo and guild wars 2 if if somebody is way out of their league, I'm going to watch them get themselves killed because by hand-holding them throughout every little thing they do, saying, "Oh, it's going to be better. We're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to help you out and and make make it so you can do this." No, they're not going to learn like that. They at least not effectively. Um, it's you got to you got to give tough love is, is what I'm trying to say. You got to do and it in the right way, though. Yeah, you do, it, but it has to be tough love. There, there's a. Uh, a particular way you can't just be oh it's you know it's gonna be all good that will do nothing you'll you'll gain nothing from that player and they will go through those steps in an mmo thinking that everybody's going to handhold them when they get up to that competitive level if if that's their ambition and they get up to the esports scene and stuff the second they fail or the second they start doing uh, badly, how do you think that community, that the spectators, are going to react to that? They are going to get ripped apart like piranhas on on fresh meat. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I, you're taking you know, this a little I, too far. I don't think yeah, we're I talking think, about high level competitive community baddies. Well, it's no baddies are going like to make casual, it up there. We're talking we're about, about a baddie though. Here. A baddie though. What I'm trying to say is that a baddie, you have to my just summing it up. A baddie, you have to give it to him straight. Don't sugarcoat it. Otherwise, he will always be a baddie, and then you're doing nobody a favor. There you go. All right. So I, I'd like to point out, and I think this is actually something that Freelancer talked about in one of our guild meetings, the way that you approach someone to try and aid them is way super important. Because if you start by accusing someone of being bad, number one, unless they already hold that viewpoint, they're going to by default disagree with you, and they're going to get defensive about it. You don't want them to get defensive about it because defensive people do not listen to arguments. What, even if everything that you're saying is completely true and the logical connections that you are making are perfect, defensive people will not listen to that reason. So what you defensive need to Defensive people do, have no place on a team, though, or in a, we're or in a guild. We're not talking about a team. We're talking about <laughs> some people that are just playing right, with I'm going to step outside the realm of comp competition. All How about right? that? So... <laughs> And, and this can be true even for people that are just developing bad habits on a team. What you want to do is talk to people and the best way to get to somebody without getting their defenses up is ask them if they are willing to let you give them some advice. So the, the question should be, are you willing to hear some advice from me? If they say no, 
probably if you keep trying, nothing's going to happen anyway. So definitely step back and, and work, stop at that moment because maybe they're in a bad mood or whatever. But if you get them to say yes, they are then asking you for advice at that point. Once, the, once you get them to agree, okay, I am willing to listen to advice to you, now it's a completely different situation. You're not coming up to them and telling them that they're bad. You're saying, I have some tips for you. Would you like to hear them? And if they say yes, that's them accepting that they are about to listen. So in their mind, they can't get, as, it's, it's way harder to get defensive once you get past that point. So that's the first step. If you want to talk to a friend and say, you're not very good at this game, the way that you start the conversation is, would you mind if I gave you some advice? Or were you willing to hear some criticism? Something to that effect. And the other thing to point out, and I, I have this problem with somebody that I know is uh, really just doesn't want to be told how to play the game. Because <laughs> the point of playing a game is for you to figure it out for yourself is, is how some people look at it. And so you can't just sit there and tell them what they're doing wrong. You can't, you can't do it mid game. That's also a really bad time to do it because they're stressed out. Maybe they actually in their head are going, why am I doing so poorly? If you just confer confirm it by telling them, hey, you're doing that wrong, it's just gonna make things worse. Wait until after the game and then give them some, say, do you, are you willing to take some criticism? I think I, I, I have analyzed something that maybe you could be doing better and give it to them one bite at a time. And some people, uh, for example, that are brand new to the genre don't need to have their hand held. Uh, you, they can learn by doing. So give somebody a chance to become a baddie. You know, give somebody a chance to learn on their own. People like to learn on their own a lot more. Don't give them straight answers. Ask them questions like, okay, so why did you die that time? And let them analyze it themselves. Oh, uh, it was because I got stunned and I couldn't do anything. So then how would you solve that? Okay, well, maybe I'll dodge this when I see him doing the stun next time or something to that effect. I think that is the most effective way to teach people anything, uh, much less, you know, games, is, is sort of give them guidance and have them figure it out for themselves rather than simply telling them because then again, that gives them defensive. Yeah, I think what we can agree on is everybody has a different way to be approached, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I kept hitting the competitive area, but even with casual players, you can't just, you can't burn them at the stake the second they do something wrong, I guess. Um, but, you know, uh, like uh, Ahara was saying in chat there. But that's how all, you keep friendships with people that aren't as able to take criticism like you're talking about, Freelancer. Yeah, well, that's because I'm an Asura, you know? <laughs> so. Hey, Buka! <laughs> What are you doing? So, so therefore, no matter what I do, it's right. And anything you do, I invented it first. You have to get this straight, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you're secretly a Silvari. What? Now, As Asura has the smaller hitboxes, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Reznok says, I want to say, what you're saying is, Bridger, what you're saying is good in theory, but when you try to tell that to some people, some people are like, you take this too seriously, bro, and then they don't listen to you. And there are those people out there. And so that's, that, that is another answer. How do you deal with those people? Like those people that want to play with you, but they don't try active learning. They don't pay attention to what they did wrong. They just kind of passively try to absorb knowledge rather than actively trying to absorb knowledge. So do you have any, any words of wisdom to that end, Freelancer? Get new friends, I think is what you're gonna say, isn't it? Get out of my team. <laughs> Disconnect. <laughs> I guess that's an answer. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it, at that point, I think if you've got people that, uh, you know, they want to play with you, but you want to play on a higher level than they want to play, and they say you take this game too seriously, at that point, it, it, it's not, not as harsh as like get new friends, but it is you have to explain to them, listen, I really do want to play this on a higher level. And so you're, if you don't want to play it as seriously as I do, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's very important. It's just, there's well, that, nothing wrong with that. I, I have this problem all the time because I'm trying to get my buddies to play Dota. And <laughs> they played it for 15 minutes. And they're like, why do you play this game? This is, this is the worst game I've ever played. I'm like, you got to stick with it. You got you to gotta, you gotta learn it. And they're like, nope, I'm done. And then they, and then they leave it. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm going to keep playing. So if you don't want to play, that's fine. But I'm going to keep playing. <laughs> there, are, there, are a couple, there are a couple that have stuck with it. But, I mean, it's just a perfect example of you're trying to teach someone a game. Because, I mean, let's face it, all those types of games have a huge learning curve. Yeah. Um, and 
if they don't want to learn it, if they're not willing to learn it, then there's not much you could do. You just got to say, whatever, I'm going to keep playing it. If you want to play with me, you got to learn the game. Otherwise, I'll see you later. Kai, you're a guild leader too. How would you approach somebody in the guild that wasn't performing up to par? You know, let's just say whatever your guild standard of, of quality is, they're like, they're AFK, you know, they're, they're pressing their one all the time, whatever. How would you approach them? Uh, would you use my method, a combination? What would you do? Firstly, if it was something like they were doing like really badly, it was like, say, I mean, I PVE more than PvP. So say it was PVE, we're talking about like a high level dungeon, something like that, and they're like AFKing or dying all the time. I'd firstly ask them, like, is everything okay? Like, do you need 10 minutes? Give them the benefit like, of the doubt. Maybe they're yeah, dealing like, with something else. If they're busy, someone could be like shouting at them. They could have internet issues. Like, I'll give them the opportunity to tell me that, you know, they're lagging or whatever. Um, and if I need to replace them, I'll ask, you know, do you need to be replaced? And if they're like, oh, no, no, everything's fine, then I'd be like, okay. Um, and then I would probably just let them carry on. Um, but I'm very much like the same method as you in the sense that I don't really like to tell people what they're doing wrong in the middle of doing something because people get angry. Um, they'll, an argument will start and they'll be, as you said, defensive, which means that it just causes drama for everyone. So I'd rather then just wait until the end and then, you know, pull them to one side, either on like a, a VoIP server or whisper and just say, you know, is there anything I can do to help? Because as you like, you know, you weren't up to the scratch of the rest of the team. Um, you know, I want to help you. Um, is there any advice I can give? And I would very much be like you. I would ask them, um, can I help? And they're, if they're just like, no, I'm fine. I would be like, okay, well, you know, we'll see next time. Um, and if it was still bad, I'd probably be like, look, you know, if you're not going to take my help, then I'm going to have to replace you. Um, but yeah, I think I'd be very much like how you said, like it's about like personalities and how people react. Right. I think that system has some big drawbacks, though. Um, as a leader, I mean, let's let's look at this mother nature in general. If you're not the leader that can make make the calls right away, and if they don't answer right away, I mean, that right there is an issue of trust. I would think they have to be able to understand that if you offer a suggestion, whether it be right or wrong at that very instant, that you are in charge of your guild, Kai. Um, that's just my opinion, but it's one of those yeah. things like if, you, if you're dealing with a pack of dogs, you got to have that lead dog. The second that lead dog hurts his ankle and shows uh, any sort of fallacy whatsoever, what do you think the rest of those dogs are going to do? You know, and that's, that's sort of how I think that, I mean, there has to be a love-hate relationship, but at the same time, you have to be that one that's, that says that you puts your foot down and, and is that final say. If this is going wrong for you this is how it's going to be i don't care if you like it you know understand that i'm doing this in your best interest i'm not here to make a scene about it you know and that's how it has to be there shouldn't be any debate and that's why tiered structures like uh, guild structures i think are great you should always have that good cop get bad cop officer you know yeah. the ones that the ones that jump in i'm sure you have one kai that yeah. that jumps in and, and and plays the nice card you know oh i understand how you feel you know, but this is how our guild does things, and you know, and at that point, you stay out of it. But the alpha, the alpha dog, the main, the main dog, the guild leader, or whoever that that might be, it might not even be the guild leader, it might be one of the officers, has to be the final say. You have to have that structure, and it has to be to the point where nobody questions it. Even if it is wrong, there's a time and place to bring it up among your officers that, hey, I made a bad call to the guild. But to your your just using that metaphor, to your pups, to, to your guild members who want to have a good time and more importantly want to be successful, there has to be no sign of fallacy whatsoever in order to successfully lead that group and prevent drama at the same time. They have to have that support structure. And even at the back of everybody's mind that is in a guild, they tell themselves, oh, I want to be in a guild that has the super nice guild leader that always understands my problems and stuff. No, they don't. What they want is a guild that performs. They want a guild that has that structure in place so that if they do need to talk to somebody, there is that person. But the the direction is very clear, and everybody's on the same same bus. Last well, yeah. time people join my guild, they think I'm going to be the nice, happy guild leader. And then when I start shouting at people, they're like, what is this? Why is she so horrible? <laughs> Kai, I know you're just a mean person. Uh, it's <laughs> Underneath. So uh, Team Legacy is now being renamed the House of Stark. <laughs> and uh, the Game of Thrones is starting up. We got all these dog metaphors going on here. Game of Thrones is starting up. It's 9 o'clock. We're losing people on the stream left and right. Let's get, let's get wrapped up here.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great show. Thanks to Kai, Vega, and Freelancer for joining me again this week. Uh, it has been... Oh, there's a fly in It's freaking summer already. All right, so <laughs> we're heading right over to the iDrop stream, though, if anybody wants to come with us who isn't watching Game of Thrones. Twitch.tv slash the letter I, D-R-O-P-S, iDrops. I put the link in the chat there. Come on, head over. I'm going to be casting some League of Legends. It's going to be awesome. Don't forget, contest at... TalesOfTyria.com is how you can get your Guild Wars 2 beta key, huzzah, coming soon and uh, hopefully this weekend. And if we are this weekend, we'll see you at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time next Sunday. For everyone, I'm signing off. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good show, guys. Hopefully we have enough mailbag to last us if there's no beta weekend this weekend. <laughs> oh, oh there'll be a beta weekend. <laughs> yes, we just have to think that it will. Believe. I'm going to write a strongly worded letter <laughs> to Arena Net. Everybody knows that strongly worded letters, handwritten, get a lot more done. So They really do. I think this is going to be a very interesting question of the week next week. We're going to have a fun time dealing with that uh, if we get any good feedback. Um, so... I guess uh, there's nothing more. It's hot as hell in here. I'm going to turn on the AC already. Um, we're going to head on over to the eyedrop stream. Uh, anything else, you guys? No. no I, d I wanted to say a little shout out to Ivan Nick, I think his name is, that I was using a metaphor. I don't actually think that <laughs> the Legacy members are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think he took it a little serious there. It, w it was a metaphor. Um, no, all I was trying to say is that... Uh, you know, you got to have the, the strong dog because if you're not going to be the strong dog leading your guild, somebody else will step up and do it for you. Um, and that's I, what we I call the enforcer. That. Yeah, that's uh, – sadly, <laughs> that's the way guilds work. Guilds fall apart because lack of structured uh, leadership, but sadly. That's – what would you say is the biggest, biggest loss of a guild, Kai? The biggest reason a guild falls apart? Uh, drama. <laughs> drama? What do you think What do you think's the number one source of drama? People sucking at the game. <laughs> <laughs> the baddies, right? <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, or just drama llamas. People who are born to cause drama. There are now, those people. I, I, th I, in my experience, and it's completely different from everybody else, but I think most people leave guilds or form their cliques and leave guilds because they feel like the direction of the guild isn't progressing the way they want. That's my opinion. Um, or like the drama that you're mentioning is uh is caused by those members who feel like the leadership is weak i really do i think it's all centered around having a solid leadership and not basing it on what just one guy you know or one one woman so to speak <laughs> all right i'm yeah. jumping off of skype i'm gonna head over okay. to uh team speak here all right well, i'll right. see you guys next week yes hopefully hopefully yeah. we have beta to talk about <laughs> so All if, right, if we guys. do if we do get in, uh, we should try and have like uh, a situation where we're all like all the team Tales of Tyria hosts are all like in a PvP match or something together, and we're all streaming. That would be a fun time. I don't know if we can like schedule that for like Saturday night or something. That would be yeah. pretty cool. Uh, I mean, we're probably going to be doing a lot of our own streaming, but I'd like to try and get an organized thing, Tales of Tyria style thing, uh, before the official thing on Sunday. And if we do figure that out, then maybe I'll post stuff all over the Tales of Tyria places and say, hey, check it out, and we'll put it on the YouTube channel. It should be a good time. As long as you go on the opposite team, Bridger. Should make oh. a PvP team. <laughs> I'm on Freelancer's team. I, I don't want any feeders on my team. Feeders. <laughs> get out of here. Brand never feeds. <laughs> All right. All right, see you later, guys. Closing Skype before I cry. <laughs>